We see railway and road signs all around us and it's fairly easy to make miniature version of them that look real. Stick around and I'll show you how you can make photorealistic road and railway signs at home for your model railroad or diorama. First you select the signs that are appropriate for your scene. My scene is an unmanned level crossing here in India, so I needed a couple of whistle signs to put beside the railway track. On the road, I needed a couple of speed breaker signs at the approach of the level crossing and an approach of an unmanned level crossing sign at the longer end of the road. I also decided to add speed limit signs for both the railway as well as the road. Next it is about resizing the photos. Fortunately for me, the dimensions of these boards are made available to the public by the Indian Railways. The idea is simple, take the real life dimension and divide them by 87 to get the HO scale size, the scale that I decided for my diorama. Once you have the HO scale size, it is about resizing the photos to that size. For Photoshop users, it is fairly simple to do it using Photoshop Smart Object. Here is a video that can show you all about it, link in the post description below. I do not have Photoshop license and use Chimp photo editing freeware instead. This is like old Photoshop but it does not have Smart Object capabilities. However, I can still use some simple tricks to get the required compression without losing much quality. Let me show you how. Here I'm picking up the locomotive sign from the photo that you saw earlier. I used free select tool to select the triangular board. The idea is that I'll create a new image only with this part. Then I use the new image template to open new canvas. The trick here is to change the dimensions from pixels to millimeter so that you can start doing the direct dimensional conversion from the scale dimensions calculated earlier. In this case, first I took a square canvas of 20.64 millimeter. The width that is automatically captured by the software from the original image of the whole board. Now let me pull the scale image dialog box. First you change the resolution but by default it is in pixels per inch. For our purpose we change it to pixels per millimeter. This image is about 3.78 pixels per millimeter. First let me show you what happens if I just scale the image in the same resolution to the scale dimension, 9mm in this case. See that heavy pixelation that just happened? Even though the pixel per millimeter remained the same, the whole picture is now compressed to half the size with same density of pixels, so it got to lose some of those pixels, isn't it? So how do we deal with that? Let me revert and I'll show you. Let's try scaling it again, but this time, instead of handling with the image size, let's manipulate the resolution to get to the desired image size as close as possible. If I give 12, the image size comes to 6.5 millimeters, so that is too small. Let's try 9 pixels per millimeter, and that keeps the image size to very close to 9 millimeter. Let's do that. Now at that zoom level, you see nothing changed in the image, right? Because the pixel density is now increased for the new reduced image size, so it retained most of the original resolution. Next, we just save this image at top quality. The miniature photo of the signboard was copied to a new 6x4 image. This is the master file that will be printed later. For the distance plate below the sign, I just followed the same method. Utilize the resolution per millimeter to manipulate the image size to the nearest scale size. Then it was copied to the master. I continued with the same method for the rest of the boards. Next was the railway whistle board. These boards should be about 7 mm square and I did the same pixel manipulation method to resize the image. One thing I forgot to mention is that to create the best quality, you need to use the cubic interpolation. The image was then moved to the master and a few copies made quickly since I needed more than one. I followed the same steps to get the Hindi equivalent of the sign as well. 
I gathered some different options of similar signs, like the speed limit boards for both railway and the road. Once I was satisfied with the collection, I moved on to printing. I used a standard 6x4 photo paper to print the boards. The photo paper retains most of the clarity and is more durable than printer paper. The thickness also works for HO scale, but for smaller scales, you might need to print it on thinner paper. Now that the print is ready, I sprayed black primer on the back and left it for drying. Next, the poles. I needed alternate black and white zebra banding for each of the poles. The real-life poles are generally light T-beams, so I decided to use the 1.5mm and 2mm wide styrene strips for the poles. I needed 3mm wide masking tapes to match the scale width of 250mm for each band. I spliced my 6mm Tamiya masking tape in the middle to make a couple of 3mm ones. I marked the banding positions on the styrene strips and started masking the alternate bands. It is a tedious process, but a necessary one. Next, I took my Rust-Oleum flat black primer and sprayed all over the strip, making sure the strips stay as perpendicular as possible to the direction of the spray. Once you start removing the masking tapes, the alternate black and white bands get revealed. There was of course some leakage, but I simply removed the excess black paint using a sharp hobby knife. See how I used the natural white color of the styrene to my full advantage. Next I cut the 1.5mm wide strips to scale dimension, that is 1.5 scale meter tall, and a little longer strips of the 2mm ones. Then I spliced the 2mm ones from the middle to make 1mm banded strips. Gluing these 1mm banded strips to the center of the 1.5mm ones make the T-beams. The little longer and thinner 1mm extensions at the bottom will work as mounting pins. It's time to get back to the print. I cut out the signs from the paper measured the scale height as mentioned in the Indian Railway Manual and glued the boards using superglue. I used a red felt tip pen to hide the white edges. The bands didn't match up perfectly in some cases, but that was easily fixed either by adding thin black lines using 0.2mm fine tip black pen on the white overlap or by removing black paint from black overlap using a hobby knife. I was pretty happy with the first one, so I continued with the others. Next was the speed breaker sign. Then I switched over to the railway signs and made the whistle indicators for both sides of the approach. The round disc-shaped roadway speed indicators were a little tricky. I had to carefully cut the round shape with my precision scissors. That comes with every Swiss army knife set. Then I put finishing on the edges by rubbing a red felt tip pen. I have a decent set of road and railway signs by now. They look awesome, but there is something else that I need to do to make them look realistic. My favorite part, weathering. First, some paint chipping. By simply rubbing the pencil on the edges, you create an illusion that the paint from the edges are gone and the metal underneath shines through very subtly. For light rust, I used Sepia Tone Artist Oil Pencil. For heavy rust, I used burnt umber and raw sienna acrylic paints. It is a creative process. I used my detail brush and carefully applied rust and streaking on the models.
Sponge method was used to add random heavy rust deposit on the pole. I did various degree of weathering for different boards and posts. Some were pretty rusty, one board was kept nearly new where others met somewhere in the middle. It is important to keep in mind that variety goes a long way to achieve realism. Finally, for superficial dusty rust, I used light brown dry pastel, one of my favorite weathering methods. Notice that for a couple of road signs, I didn't do the banding. I ran out of banded styrene strips and didn't have patience to build them again from scratch. But despite being lazy, it doesn't affect the realism because there are many poles that you'll find on Indian roads where the banding is totally gone and it's just a black rusted rod. Once I was satisfied with all the paint jobs, I sealed everything down with another of my favorite material, Tester's Talcoat Lacquer. This protects the paint and weathering that's done on the models as well as the printed surfaces, plus takes away any unrealistic shine from the models. No doubt that it's a great little set of signboards, but they really come to life when placed in a diorama. For the railroad signs, I made dedicated concrete blocks beside the track to place them just to ensure that they are all placed at the right height. For the road signs, I simply drilled 1mm holes beside the road and pushed the signs in. As you can see, these little signs made some significant difference in the realism in this little diorama that I made. And if you like what you'd see now, then get excited because in the next few episodes, I'll be covering various aspects of building this diorama, showcasing some brand new techniques to achieve great results. I sincerely hope that in our socially distanced confinements in this strange new time, these little tips, tricks and demonstrations keep you engaged in doing something creative and gives you motivation to build extraordinary models. Stay safe, protect your family and have fun making miniatures. Thank you.